Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your uh, interesting program. So today I want to talk about the world's first solar cell, Icarus, and the mission overview of the Julian Trojan asteroid exploration mission utilized the solar power cell. So first I'd like to show myself in this slide. I am now a postdoctoral fellow in the Lunar and Planetary Exploration Program Group in JAXA. And my main research interest is about the solar cell membrane dynamics and the spacecraft attitude dynamics and control. And also I am studying about the space system engineering. And I have studied about the Icarus and solar cell from when I was doctoral course student in ISAS in JAXA. I had studied about the numerical analysis on the cell membrane dynamics and the other activities on the Icarus shown here. And now I am studying about the uh, mission design of the future solar power cell mission. And also I am in charge of the design and the development of the power cell membrane and its deployment mechanism. So I, I want to talk about the Icarus and the solar power cell mission uh, based on my experience in the activity on JAXA. This figure shows a demonstration of the photon propulsion. And uh, this data is uh, Doppler data with the communication between the Earth and the Icarus. And the vertical axis denotes the velocity difference between the observed value and the calculated value. And the cell is deployed at this time. And before the time, the difference between the observed value and the calculated value is flat. But after the deployment, the Doppler is changed like this linearly. So from this velocity difference, we estimate the acceleration by the solar cell. And uh, we calculated that the thrust by the solar radiation pressure is about 1.2 billion newtons by the equation. So this is the first data of the solar sailing. And next we go to the reflectivity control test that is used for the attitude control. This is an image taken by the separation camera. You can see that there is a reflectivity difference between this area and this area. And we control this area to the specular reflection and this area to the diffuse reflection. And in this experiment, we can confirm that the reflectivity can be controlled. By using these devices, we test the attitude control. This is the figure of the sun angle before and after the control start. And in this area, the angle is inclined, but after the control start, the sun is declined like this figure. And from this difference, the estimated line and the control line, we evaluate the RCD control device. By using this RCD, we can control the attitude uh, of the cell about one degree about the day at 2 RPM. And after uh, we and demonstrate all the technology required for the solar cell. We finished the full success mission. And the Icarus is about flying by the Venus, like this figure. And this image was taken at the flyby phase of Venus. And we evaluate the total acceleration by solar radiation pressure. And uh, in the half year, uh, we get uh, about 100 meter per second by the solar cell. The Icarus was launched with the Venus climate orbiter Akatsuki, but the Icarus arrived at Venus one day later than Akatsuki. So we can confirm that the Icarus was decelerated by the solar cell. In the half year after the launch of the Icarus, we succeeded to complete the minimum success and full success. And then we went to the extended operation, like this slide. Its purpose is to observe the deformation of the cell and the low centrifugal force environment, and to enhance the knowledge about the effect of the stiffness of the membrane. In the extended operation, we challenged to the 
slow spin operation and also the reverse spin operation. And then the vehicles go to hibernation mode. So we made the search mission. Now I will explain about these three missions. First, I show the result of the slow spin mission. And during the nominal operation, the spin rate of vehicles has decreased naturally by solar radiation pressure torque because the same shape is deformed from the flat shape. We call this the windmill effect. So we think that if we change the spin rate of the vehicles, the shape of the cell will be changed on the solar radiation torque. So we want to test the effect of the solar radiation and the changing of the spin rate. And in this slow spin operation, we decrease the spin rate of vehicles from 2 RPM to the 0.0 and 5, 5 RPM. We are very surprised from this image taken at the zero spin state because there is no deformation of the cell uh, compared to the shape of the 2 RPM. We had expected that reduction of the centrifugal force would cause the deflection of the cell by solar radiation pressure. This slide shows the numerical prediction before the launch by the multi particle model method. And at the 2.5 RPM, the cell keeps a flat shape, but at the 0.05 RPM, the cell will be deformed by the solar radiation pressure. These are the numerical prediction, but the flight result is not deformed like this image. So we think that we should revise the new makeup model and we consider the high bending stiffness model to keep the shape, shape of the cell. And this is the new makeup simulation result with the high bending stiffness model. And this model can simulate the shape of the light result. So uh, we think that the cell membrane has very high bending stiffness and uh, um, we predicted before the launch. By using this modified model, we simulated the thrust control sequence for reverse spin operation. This slide shows the attitude drift motion of the Icarus during the nominal operation. From the flight result of the nominal operation, it was found that the spin axis direction and the spin rate of the Icarus is affected by the deformation of the cell. And this figure shows the concept of the deformation of the cell. And by this deformation of the cell, the effect of the solar radiation force and torque is changed. So this deformation causes the spin rate change and the spin axis change. And this figure shows the observed change of the spin rate and the spin axis. And in this figure, the vertical axis denotes the spin rate of the cell, and we can see that the spin rate is decreased slightly, like this here. And also, we can see that the spin axis is drift, like this figure. And in this figure, the right filter axis is in plane axis towards the sun, and the vertical axis you know, the out of plane axis towards the sun. The spin axis is drifted like this here and contributed to the equilibrium point. We want to complete this attitude dynamics model under the solar radiation pressure. So we want to get more information in another shape of the cell. So we go to the reverse spin operation. This figure shows the result of the reverse spin operation. This was done at October 18 in 2011. And the spin rate was controlled by using the gas jet thruster attached on the main body. Angular velocity history is shown in this graph. And in this graph, the vertical axis denotes the angular velocity and the red point denotes the spin rate of the cell. And we can see that uh, gradually the spin rate is towards to the reverse spin, like this here. This light figure denotes the spin rate history around the reverse spin operation. And in this area, Icarus is spinning in the normal 
direction, and after this reverse spin operation, the spin rate uh, becomes minus values. Without this spin rate keeping control and this reverse spin operation, there is no spinning control for it cause. So this change of the spin rate is dead by the solar radiation pressure torque. And from this figure, we can see that in the normal spinning, the spinning rate is decreased, but at the reverse spin phase, the spinning rate becomes higher, up to 6 RPM. We take images during the reverse spin operation. Uh, we can see that the cell, uh, the cell membrane of Icarus has not deformed as numerical prediction before the launch. So we think that the cell membrane has large bending stiffness as expected. From these results, we have considered that the bending stiffness of the cell membrane is very high, like this concept here. Before the launch, we think that the solar radiation pressure is larger than the bending stiffness, but from the operation result, we think that bending stiffness is larger than solar radiation pressure. So we think that this is very important knowledge for the design of the solar cell and also the design of the spinning rate of the solar cell. After the reverse spin operation, the deformation of the cell is kept, so the decreasing of the spin rate and the drift of the spin axis is changed because the spin rate direction is changed. In the normal operation, the spin axis is kept near the sun direction, but after the reverse spin operation, the spin direction is uh, moved far from the sun direction. So this image is denotes the uh, assured motion after the reverse spin operation. And also after the reverse spin operation, the fuel was exhausted, so we cannot control the attitude in this phase. So the attitude of the solar cell is kept in inertia coordinate. So by orbiting around the sun, we repeat the no normal mode and the hibernation mode like this here. Because uh, the solar cell panel is loaded around at the spin axis side. In this area, we cannot generate sufficient power, so the ECOS becomes shut down mode in this case. So we need to predict the orbit during the hibernation mode. We estimate the optical parameter of the cell from the nominal operation, and we predict the spin axis like this here. After the hibernation mode, we searched the signal of Icarus, and on September 6, 2012, we succeeded in the acquisition of the Icarus signal. So from this search operation, it is verified that the attitude and orbit of Icarus was predicted within enough accuracy to reacquire the signal. And now Icarus is repeating the hibernation mode and the normal mode. And we succeeded in three times to acquire the signal of Icarus. And now Icarus is orbiting in this point, like in this figure. And this figure shows Sun and Earth fixed coordination. In this phase, Icarus is far from the Earth, and Icarus is lost its actual control, so we can use only the low gain antenna, so we cannot get sufficient data from the Icarus. But two years after, the Icarus will be approached to the Earth, so we can get much more data from Icarus. For example, the images of the cell membrane and also the Doppler data to aid the attitude determination. We now continue the operation for the aim of this approaching to the Earth. These are the explanation about the Icarus mission. And then I want to talk about the Jovian Trojan asteroid mission from this slide. We get much knowledge about spinning solar cell from Icarus, and now we are studying about the future solar power cell mission. That is the Trojan asteroid exploration mission. Here I show the orbit of the Jovian Trojan asteroid. That is the asteroids around the L4 point and the L5 point of the Sun-Jupiter system. 
The mission scenario is summarized here, and we are planning to launch it in 2024. And after the Earth swing by, and the Jupiter swing by, the spacecraft will be arrived at the Trojan asteroid and landed. We think that these are the full success mission, and the mission duration is about 15 or 16 years. So this is a long time. And also we are studying about the sample return mission. After the rendezvous to the Trojan asteroid, the daughter spacecraft is released from the mother spacecraft, and then the samples of the surface of the asteroid is taken by the daughter spacecraft. And after that, the sample is, sample is transferred to the mother spacecraft, and the mother spacecraft will be back to the Earth by using the Jupiter thing by. So for this mission, we are now designing the solar power cell. In this mission, the area of the cell will be about 2,000 or 3,000 square meters. This is 10 or 15 times larger than the Icarus. We think that the spin rate should be 0.5 and 0.1 RPM. And to drive the ion engine, we should generate uh, about 200 kilowatts at the orbit of the Earth. And we also set the success criteria like this. And also we are studying our the target asteroid. These are the examples of the candidate asteroid. And the target is defined from the scientific request. This slide shows the uh, example of the trajectory for the target asteroid. The orbit is divided into the five phases. First is uh, Earth gravity assist phases, and next is Earth to Jupiter phases. And after the Jupiter swing by to the target asteroid, it is shown in figure. This shows the uh, force of the ion engine propulsion system. We estimate the acceleration of it. And in this mission, we think that the solar sailing acceleration is not so high compared to the ion energy thruster. So we designed the trajectory in consider of the ion engine propulsion. We are studying about the return phase orbit, like this figure. And also we are studying about the daughter spacecraft mission, landing the surface of the asteroid with the solar power cell. So we should release the Dota spacecraft, and after the landing, Dota spacecraft will sample of the surface of the asteroid. And now we are studying about the development for the Trojan mission, like this figure. This is the cell design, and this figure shows the manufacturing of the prototype of the cell. We have made some tests to verify how to do the solar cell. And also we are planning to get the deployment test of the solar power cell. Okay, thank you for listening. That's all my presentation.